So Gizzy's on the couch with his face buried in my afghan. My sister, out of the kindness of her heart, made me a beautiful afghan. And I just love it because I can lay on the couch and watch TV and throw that on on a chilly night. It's just uh, awesome. But I have to tell you that Gizzy, who I love dearly, he's just the sweetest little guy. Um, but Gizzy is actually our second pug. And tonight I was cleaning up an iMac that I don't use anymore and getting it ready to sell. And I backed up some of the files that were on it and discovered that I had a bunch of old video on there of another pug and our first pug that we got. Get that old armadillo, Walter. And most people, I don't think I've ever even talked about it, so other than family, most people don't know, but uh, Terry and I, in the early to mid-2000s, 2004 to be exact, we packed up and left Lincoln, Nebraska and moved into an airplane hangar on a private airstrip in Oklahoma. And this thing basically had about the same amount of space that we live in in our RV for actually living in, <laughs> in the airplane hangar. So I'm incredibly lucky to have a woman that will, you know, put up with that kind of existence. The idea was that I was growing a little business um, selling pilot supplies. I'm a pilot. And so this is like a major dream of mine. I'm living in, you know, in an airplane hangar with my airplane, a 1960 Mooney M20A, which was just an incredible airplane. Loved that thing. Retractable gear. It was a 145 knot airplane, so that's like 170 miles an hour on eight gallons an hour of fuel, which is just unheard of. And held four people, you know, uh, barely. The people in the back were cramped for sure. But uh, you know, beautiful airplane. I love the dihedral and the wings on that thing. But Terry wanted a pug. And one day, my daughter called from Denver and said she knew of a pug there. And I assumed it was one of her friends. So I went to Denver, met the guy, and sure enough, he just couldn't devote enough time to this little pug. And so he wanted, wanted him to go to a good home. So sure enough, he gives me this pug and his cage and everything. And unbeknownst to me, my daughter didn't know the guy. <laughs> she had read a, you know, read an, uh, an ad on Craigslist. This guy gave me this incredible dog named Walter. So I loaded him up in the airplane, and and I, you know, this was back when uh, Denver had Centennial Airport on the south side. I mean, it's still there, but it was basically about the only general aviation airport on that side of town at all and so it was super busy i mean i've i've been there and heard the controller chew people out centennial ground mooney 76 x-ray is uh, down with the run-up ready for departure at uh, one seven left mooney 76 x-ray move up to the hall line and plan a southwest departure move up to that hall line and monitor tower uh, Roger, to the hold line, we'll monitor tower, southwest departure, 76 x ray. 904 Mike. Uh, 04 Mike calling Centennial Tower, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir, we are handed off to you, and we have Kilo, we're 5 to the southwest with Kilo. Roger. Right. Uh, this is 04 Mike that's calling me. Who are you? What kind of airplane are you? Where are you? And do you want a full stop? 504 Mike. Yes, sir. We're Bonanza. We're five to the southwest. We're talking to 3275. He gave me to you, and we have Kilo. Yes, full stop. 
Okay, sir, when you get flight following from Denver Approach Control, they don't pass any of that information on to us. You need to check in like you would normal VFR inbound. Go up to the North Shore Cherry Creek Reservoir. Let me know when you're there on final for runway 17 left. 04 Mike. And normally, they're, you know, air traffic controllers are very forgiving because uh, all pilots, especially, you know, private pilots, we make mistakes. And uh, they're normally pretty good about it. You know, I've, I've, I've had it. And, and it only seems to happen when you've got someone in the airplane you want to impress, you know, with your skills. <laughs> I've had a controller call me and go, hey, looks like you're lined up on the wrong runway. <laughs> you know? And says, you can have that if you want, you know, but uh, anyway. Uh, stuff happens, you know, but I loaded this dog up and I told the controller, hey, I've got a dog in here that I don't know if he'll fly or not, you know, I may have to come right back. And uh, not a problem, off we went. I flew him back to Oklahoma and he was the most incredible dog. He discovered, he always seemed to like the water, he'd run along the edge of it. <laughs> but we had a neighbor dog, and you didn't have to keep your dogs on a leash or anything. This was out in the country. The neighbor dog was a black lab, and one day I saw the black lab cut across a shallow area of the pond where we'd go fishing, and Walter followed him, but it was too deep for Walter, and so <laughs> where the lab could wade, Walter had to swim, and suddenly he discovered he could swim. And from then on, he was a water dog. The craziest thing you ever saw. If we'd go, like my brother has a swimming pool, we'd go to his house, Walter would be right in there climbing up on you if you're floating around on a air mattress or something. And if you, you know, threw a stick in, he'd go get it and uh, bring it back. He'd bring our bobbers back. He wouldn't let us fish sometimes. He'd go in and get your bobber and <laughs> bring it back. But anyway, uh, Walter had some other personality quirks in that, but uh, I'm so glad that we have a pug again. It just, uh, you know, the, the dog seems to, uh, seems to fit us pretty well. I miss having an airplane for sure, but uh, uh, this is a pretty decent, decent trade-off, I would say. Anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs>